southern and northern leaders lay out terms to remain in the entity called Nigeria. And violence erupts in prior state as Christians and Muslims clash over raging wearing of hijab. Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cohen. Well, joining me to have this conversation is Ken Robinson. He is the Secretary General for Pandef in River State and, of course, uh, an attorney, Christian Mwoko. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Mwoko. Good evening. Thank you, uh, viewers. All right, so I'm going to start with this um, Nines. Uh, this is almost like a replica of IPOB, if I'm not mistaken. What's the difference between their self-determination and that of IPOB? I'll start with you, um, I'll start with you, Mr. Njoko. My point is that uh, the, demand, the demand by IPOL is not unreasonable. Now, if you understand the premise upon which this demand is made, it's saying, look, let some things be put in place. So it, it, it's saying, I'm sure the fundamental is that they are ready to be part of this nation. It's for the nation to also decide that they really want to accommodate them. Now, I thought it's not really the only uh, group that is asking, you know, the government to fully integrate the citizen. Let everybody feel like you are a Nigerian. Let everybody feel like this is a nation that you have a part to. But you see, when it's looking like that some part of the nation is having a larger hand and upper hand over the other parts of the nation. Some of these grievances will come up. So we I am of the opinion that the leaders of this country should actually engage these people. I think that is the bottom line. You know, discuss with them. You know, come to uh, we will, we will come to the legality. We will come to the legality of you know this particular uh, uh, movement. But le with leaders like um, Nadi Tony as security or secretary of the group, we also have Professor Maya Wakugirimbe and Chief Sunday Adeyemo, who is also known as Sunday Go. Um, Mr. Robinson, what do you make of this group of people and their demands? You know, with the four-point agenda that they have put together. Is it timely? Could we say that this is bold, or is it just preposterous? It's, it's important to um, highlight that there is an increasing rate of uh, ethnic groups demanding for some kind of independence or republics or break away from the country. And um, we cannot uh, deny the fact that perhaps the, the major contributing factor is the very obvious evident bias in the, in the conduct of affairs by the government in the last um, six years or so. And, and so increasingly, Nigerians are disaffected, people are discontrolled, people are getting more and more incest, as it were, against uh, the government, and dissatisfied with the way things have been carried out. And so people are asking for some kind of independence or break away from the country. But I would like to say that PANDEF, as we have stated always, is not a, a sessionist organization. We believe in one Nigeria, but we, we think that things should be done on the basis of principles of fairness, of equity, and of justice. And so we, we understand the feelings in the country. And, and it has never been like this before. It is, it's never mm -hmm. been like this before. Nigeria has never been this uh, divided. And people, uh, several voices from every corner of the country um, clamoring for some kind of breakaway or the other. But we think that that's not the solution for Pandev. Um, and this, at this time, you know, if we break away, we might see other, other splitter groups breaking away from other subgroups because the, 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 the issues and the fundamental biases and issues are almost everywhere. So what Pandev has been asking for and appealing for is the restructuring of the country so that we could attain true federalism and that um, the conduct or the affairs of state could be conducted in a more uh, fair manner. And I think that that's what all groups in the country should begin to clamor for, for the destruction of the country. Let's dig deeper into uh, this group of people that call themselves NINIS. Now, uh, the, the secretary of the group, Professor Akintori, described the country as um, a distressed federation wobbling through what it seems uh, like a terminal thrall. Uh, he said that the people of the southern and the middle belt of Nigeria have been 
at the receiving end of the most vicious ethnic cleansing and an onslaught by um, heavily armed militia. In fact, they put they they called them Fulani militia. Um, they put that in bold letters, um, and they, they're saying that these people are masquerading as herdsmen. Now they're saying that they they would rather not sit back and watch the government do nothing. Um, and watch these people continuously hurt the people of the, um, the southern and, of course, um, uh, the uh, middle belt. So I'm asking, what does the law say about this issue of self-determination? We all remember we were all part of Nigeria when IPOP was prescribed by the federal government under President Muhammad Buhari. And, of course, we're seeing something else that looks like a self-determination group. Um, and with... with Figureheads like uh, the very controversial Sunday Boho, um, should we be worried? Barista. Now, the point is uh, people at the receiving end of certain governmental reforms. I think the answer is yes. People are dying. People are just, I mean, it's like something has to be done. Something has to be done. Uh, yeah, I thought that thing prescribed. So again, these are two people. Uh, I think you come by way of organization and the people who prescribe. But the people who they represent, you know, how do they feel? So basically, like um, my friend uh, mentioned, there's a need for us to sit down and actually discuss through federation. You know, let this, this country can work. I personally believe that my children can work. But then it must not work at this cost of other people. Some other person doesn't need to pay a huge sacrifice for this country to work. We can all stick together and it's not the way forward to make this country work. And if ultimately determination, self determination is the way to go, it will be part of the discussion. And by the time we are through with it, we can have a great and better nation. But really, I think we can all agree that the way this nation is configured currently, the way we are losing people, the way people are dying, it needs a very serious review. And there needs to be no grandstanding in this. Government doesn't need to uh, pretend that these things are not real. I think that government needs to engage in order for us to assuage some of these rising tensions before they escalate into something that may not be able to contain. Um, Mr. Ken Robinson, do you, we keep saying, I mean, I, I don't know if you agree with um, Barstow Wogo, um, he's saying that government needs to engage. Has there been, I mean, this is not the first, first self-determination we've heard before, I and mean, there's so many, but do you think the government has done enough to blur these lines? Because I, I think we're beginning to sound like broken records. Nigeria is a country that has its issues with ethnicity, um, divisions everywhere. How well do you think that the government of Nigeria has, I mean, I'm not just talking about the Buhari administration, I'm talking about governments from 1999 all the way down to um, 2021. How well have they been able to engage Nigerians on these issues? Or have there been some shady no-go areas where we have rather, we would rather not talk about? And maybe that's the reason why we're here again today. It, it, uh, I completely agree with uh, um, Barista Christian Wogu on um, his, his conclusions. This, the killings in the country cannot continue or perpetual. You know, um, something has to be done. And, and the onus is on the government. You know, we, we, are, we have situations where presidential orders are either ignored or treated with levity. A few weeks ago, the president ordered uh, to shoot um, on site uh, anyone that is seen in the bush uh, with AK-47 and other dangerous weapons. We've not had any report of anybody being shot at. And then the banditry in the Northwest continues. So, so uh, the government has a lot of work to do. And, and whether there has been sincere efforts to you know, stem these, these, these disaffections and uh, demands for self-determination is, is, is another issue. And, but the answer is obvious that government has not done enough. And that's why we keep seeing these things reoccurring and coming up intermittently. And, and the way it is now, it's going to be worse. The truth of the matter is that we need to call a spade a spade that nepotism under this present administration has done more harm than anything else to Nigeria. And the call and the onus, as we have always said, rests on the president and commander in chief of the armed forces of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari. He needs to be alive to his responsibilities. He needs to put, command his troops properly and make them to obey his orders. 
these killings must stop, no matter who is involved. For Nigeria to, even for us to have a, a, a very peaceful conversation, a reasonable conversation, we can't be having conversations under these kind of conditions. That's the, that's the truth of the matter. Mm. Let me go deeper into some of the demands and the, you know, the, the things that they declared during the, the press briefing. Uh, Nina's declared a dispute with the federal government via the uh, Constitutional Force Majeure Proclamation of December 16, 2020. According to them, it is uh, the one in which uh, it gave a five-point demand upon uh, the federal government to formally commence a remediation of the grave constitutional grievances um, enumerated in the said proclamation. They said they want to extricate themselves from the death trap and bondage, this is their words, um, unitary Nigeria has become for their people. Now, this is a very worded and maybe a bit, you know, um, touchy for uh, people to listen to, but they're saying that um, they do not want to be part of Nigeria anymore, and that they had given government um, a, some time to think about it and address the issue. But something that stands out for me here, um, Barrister Wogu, is the fact that they're asking for a constitutional amendment. They're saying, we need you to revisit the 1999 constitution. In fact, I remember they called it um, something that was um, drawn up side by side an apartheid government in South Africa, and that South Africa has done away with that um, constitution, but Nigeria is still following through with it. And they're saying that they want government to deal with the issue of our constitution because they feel that that might address some of our problems. Is it something that government can really do immediately at the snap of a finger because they're giving government an ultimatum of sorts? Yeah. You see, my thing is that the constitution is not working for us. It might be working for part of the nation, but really uh, profoundly, the constitution needs to be discussed, needs to be reviewed, needs to be recognized, needs to be redone. You know, in such a way that Everybody can feel the satisfaction of being a citizen to a nation. Now, some, if, if somebody gives you an automatic of money and say, look, do this or else, this means that profoundly that thought is not the thought that was originally intended. You know, the intent of the one to pull out, not on the fact of what was the original intent. The people want to talk. And that is why they have put forward and said, look, this is where we are. We may look at and we are doing some kind of um, mediation. Now, we don't neglect such things. Because you know, weakness or strength is actually a matter of perception. It happens all over throughout history. You know, the, the weak suddenly becomes strong and then strong. And then the strong becomes weak. Now, there is nothing is going to cost the, this nation, except if, you know, somebody is just being reckless uh, with due respect, to sit down and look at these demands and even discuss them. You know, look, they are not just in isolation. A lot of things have happened in this time of pandemic and, uh, uh, and the like. Meetings like this now held in Pekuali, and it's becoming almost the normal. Before it, everybody will be in central place, we will discuss, we look at each other's eyes. There is no more happy place. Things are dynamic, life is dynamic, things is dynamic. Now, so if, if there is a call and this call for continual review, it's been there. It's not just now, it's been there for decades. Now, of course, just before 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 uh, Nina's came up the stairs, um, there was another group of people who I, I spoke with last week. Um, they, they were coming together also to ask for a constitutional review of sorts, and they're in collaboration with NSAS, they're in collaboration with different pressure groups in the country because they're also trying to get government's attention. Uh, as much as as much as we would want to give government an excuse of sorts, why do you think it's taken so long for the Nigerian government to? answer the call of a constitutional review? Could it be because it's benefiting them and they'd rather not change it? Or what exactly could be um, the challenge? Yes, well, what is taking so long is self-centered. It's self-centered then. Because they consider in starting a segment of the nation that is actually, I mean, 
So long as this person is good, there's a segment of the nation that will continue to enjoy even generation value to their generation uh, unimaginable. Now, there are other parts of the nation that will pay the price for the enjoyment of that part of the nation. And in the country, it will take the, the agreement, the nodding, the consent, the collaboration of that part of the nation for the constitution to be reviewed. And so long as they keep enjoying and they are not ready to be at risk to be self said then that is what is making it to be a delay. And um, uh, okay. some kind of intervention comes and it usually comes. And part of that intervention is this for self determination. That's okay. what I think. Back to you, um, back to you, Mr. Ken Robinson. Yeah. For several weeks, you and I have been on and on talking about the issue of banditry, people being killed. Um, you know, it's just been one issue after the other. Now, the most lucrative business in Nigeria, obviously, is ca uh, kidnapping, and it's happening every day. Um, one of the most saddening things that we've seen is the video of those students that were, um, I think, adult students. Uh, they were from the university. That that was like a very terrible video that we've seen. So we keep talking about this. Government has read a riot act of sorts. Shoot at sight, close the airspace over Zampa. But the people in the middle belt, who seem somewhat are the people who feed us most of the food that we eat comes from the middle belt, and of course, maybe some parts of the north. But the, those people are feeling like they have not gotten government attention as much as they would because they've lost a lot of people. Let's not forget, before banditry became a big thing, it, you know, that they're spreading all to, down to the south, they were dealing with the people in the middle belt. And then, of course, the north. Um, I'm wondering to myself, why do you think, Mr. Ken, that with all of the conversations we've had, and not just on this platform, we've been having it everywhere else, all we have heard is government say they will do this, but what we see every other day is more and more kidnappings. Do you think that these people have a right to do what they're doing? And if there be any reaction from the government negatively, like in the case of IPOP, do you think that there will be a public outcry in support of these people and what they're asking for? Uh, it's, it's unfortunate that we see what's, what's going on daily. And it's obviously young men and adults, young adults who are involved in these acts uh, seem to think that they have a right to do what they are doing. And we've seen videos and pictures of claims that uh, they were procured to do some things for some politicians and promises uh, were not fulfilled. And so this is their way of saying, we'll pay you back. I haven't said that. It's unfortunate that almost everything in this country, almost everything, and I mean almost everything, is, is lopsided, is skewed in favor of a particular section. Even the numbers in the National Assembly, the National Assembly itself is a skewed National Assembly. And that's why we continue to see it being unable to stand by the generality of Nigerians on critical issues. Can so, I push so you a little, can I, I'm so sorry, can I push you a little on that statement you just made? Because you're saying even the National Assembly is skewed, everything is, um, you know, tailored to benefit a certain sect of the country. How do you mean? Absolutely. 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 That's, that's what we see. And that's what's going on. And that's why all these problems have continued, have persisted, in, in spite of statements by government from the highest level, from the office of the president, statements made are not, are not, are not carried out. We, we see people tolerating criminality in this country. We, we see people accommodating criminality in this country. Acts of terrorism are being tolerated and, 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 and accommodated by government or by officials of government, better put. And these things will continue until the government discharges itself from, from, from this, 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 this very obvious and apparent um, biases that we see. And, and that's, that's the only thing, uh, you, you, the, you talked about the, one of the conditions, the act by the Southern Amidio Bell Leaders Forum that they want constitutional amendment. That could tell that Sincerely, um, they are not asking that they want to leave. They want things to be better. That is correct. And the that is correct. Nigerian government must respond to these demands of the people. Let me go into um, something that you just said. And I, they, I want to buttress it with some of the things that were said by the group uh, Ninas. They also called out the government on its um, one sided um, one sidedness and, of course, their refusal to dialogue. Um, they referred to government's efforts in dealing with the issue of insecurity as knee-jerk patch work. And they also said that um, government is 
is not looking for other options on how to deal with this issue. Um, again, they they have a five point five point demand. I'd like to go into it. Um, the first demand is that they ask that the federal government should formally announce that their constitutional grievances and sovereignty disputes declared by the people of the South and the Middle East is going to be addressed. Um, they should also give a commitment to the to the by the federal government, by, rather, the federal government should give a commitment to wholesale the commissioning of the, according to them, 1999 constitution. They want it to be jettisoned. Um, and they're also asking that the government um, give a formal initiation of a time bound transitioning process to midwife the emergence of fresh constitutional protocols. I'm going to swing back to you, Dr. Uh, Barista Wogel. Uh, this is a clearly stated, um, you know, step-by-step -step thing that they want government to do. In fact, they're also asking that people from different regions, constituents from different regions of the country, be part of this process step-by-step. -step. They will have to verify, they have to vet the things that are going to, into the constitution. If they're comfortable with it, if they're not, it should be struck out. Of course, that's going to be a big deal. Remember what happened in all of the confabs and the conferences that we've had. Nobody really agrees on anything, and then we now have no-go areas. Can that, I mean, do you see any agreement coming through on this issue uh, of the decommissioning, in their words, of the 1999 Constitution? Really, the point is, and this point has been severely repeated, that the Constitution as it stands today does not start the generality of Nigerians as a whole. Now, this demands, and you know, really, uh, we need to be, to be enforced that illegality of any time, even from the person demand, making the demand or from any other person, it's not acceptable. It will not take us to any way I would. But, but will the changing of the constitution solve the problem that we're having now? Because don't forget, we're having a serious case of insecurity in the country. People are being killed, not south, east, west, whether we believe, or, be, believe it or not. Hence the reason for some of these groups rising up to call themselves names. But does a constitutional review of sorts or an overhaul deal with the immediate problems that Nigeria is facing, especially in the interim? All the problems Nigeria is facing fundamentally are traceable to the Constitution. And then uh, if we focus on the Constitution and get out a Constitution that is fully acceptable by everybody, you can be sure that possibly 90% of the problems of Nigeria will certainly abate. Hmm. Uh, finally, Mr. Ken Robinson, um, we're already a, a group of people that have been tailored to think and act a certain way. So as a Nigerian, when they ask you, I mean, you meet a person, the first thing they ask you is, where are you from? You know, they don't ask you, um, what's your name? They just say, so where are you from? And then, we, you know, I've lived in River State for a long time. We have the issue of indigenous. Uh, me, I'm an indigenous. You are not an indigenous. And it happens everywhere, especially when somebody's trying to maybe run for an office or do some good. That's when the issue of ethnicity and the biases that come with it. And we, like I always say, we're divided along the lines of ethnicity and religion. Do you think it will be easy for us to jettison the, the way we think, the way we act towards our brothers and sisters, because just a piece of paper has been signed and we've all given it a nod? Will it not take time for us to do away with that attitude, or is it something that's going to happen overnight? De definitely, it's going to take time. Change is a process. It won't happen overnight. We have been you know, living with these conditions and these biases uh, for a very long time. And it's everywhere, it's everywhere. It's not just uh, about the federal government, but uh, what, what uh, I'm sure Nigerians are saying, the federal government is the central government and should lead by example. Let us start from there. If there is a constitutional amendment and there are enabling laws that would make um, state governments or the federal unions uh, begin to put in things some place, uh, for instance, internal security should not be an exclusive, uh, it should not be in the exclusive legislative list. States uh, should be part of, uh, should be constitutionally empowered to, to take care of some internal security matters. Uh, and, and so on, on the issues of these biases and ethnicity issues, it will continue, but as, as the 
changes begin from, from the constitution to other issues, and then people begin to place less um, emphasis on where you come from. Be because what, what it is today is that even the government, you know, kind of highlights where you come from. Um, people are not appointed on merit, people are appointed on religion or ethnicity, and it's, it's across board. And so when government at all levels, I mean all levels, begin to de-emphasize ethnicity and where you come from and, and begin to project people based on merit, we, we see a Nigerian today uh, winning, or Nigerians, uh, Bonner Boy from River State and, and this kid winning Grammy Awards. Mm -hmm. If it were ethnicity, they wouldn't have won those awards if it's, where, uh, it's based on where they come from. But the, the mm -hmm. world is moving beyond where you come from. The world is looking at what can you offer? What can you bring on the table? Okay. And that should be okay. the, the emphasis that we should begin to go forward with in Nigeria. Well, Ken Robinson is the National Public Secretary for Pandit River State. And of course, uh, we also had Christian Woku. He is a legal practitioner. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being part of this conversation. Thank you. It's a pleasure always to be here. And Ken Robinson, National Public Secretary, Pandit. Thank you. National Public Secretary. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break. And when we return, uh, the prior state hijab crisis resurfaces as Christians and Muslims clash violently. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.